and have a scene on. Have a ball like it's my birthday every day in a bunch of casinos. Drive hits like I'm the bungee. One day calling all my gang. Say what's up to all the DJs in the club like Bully Bungee. Have dope like slickers with squatter camp features. Get a deal with Adidas so I can have my own sneakers. Break the ladies down like Two Face with bouncy beats and Cubase. Have my video showing on channel of Booze and Movie Trace and TV Base. Right female rapper, Lizzie James, no my double A. some fun. You're married, I'm young. You know what? Give me a break for crying a break? out loud. Don't be ridiculous. Huh? Why don't you ask him to buy you stuff for school? Huh? Give you money. Buy you phone. In fact, give me that phone. Oh, that's it. You can take your phone as if I even care about you. Okay, yes. Silly girl. I hate you. It's Sunday. It's Let's see if the little boy can give you what I can give you. Get out. Veronica, 
There's something important that I need to tell you. I'm listening. You are a very wonderful woman. You gave me a son, and I can never regret anything about that. But I'm a married man, and I love my wife. When I said it's over, I meant it. What happened between you and me the other night was a mistake. I'm still Joe's father. I hope we can figure out a way to make this situation work for his sake. I went for a visit to test today. I'm HIV positive. Run away, huh? Somebody wants to see you. Yeah. Chester, what a pleasure for you to join us. It's not like I had much of a choice. Oh well, I guess you didn't. What's this all about? This is about you not listening to what you're told to. I warned you. You just had to be so stubborn. I just had to do the right thing. Yes, the right thing. I guess we did not agree on the definition of the right thing. So I guess you won't be changing your mind over reporting this. You know I won't. Well, I'm sorry then. I'm really sorry. Let's go. We deal across all media platforms and we're always, the big thing about us is we're always looking to innovate. If we've done it once, we don't really want to do it again. We want to push the next boundary. So even, well, Freddie will speak about some of the creatives we do, but it's always what can we do differently. We're always, I think we're our biggest competition. It's always, okay, what next? What are we going to do and how can we do it better and bigger? So just to talk you through what we're going to do tonight, Freddie is going to talk to you a little bit about the industry, the creative side, and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the business side of it and what everyone always asks us, what is it like working with family? I want to say thanks to Bongo Hai for giving us this opportunity to talk to all of you. I think it's always a great privilege to share with each other uh, experiences and knowledge that can help us move forward. Um, Kathy told me I had to talk about the industry, and I was like, what is our industry? <laughs> First of all, there, there are many things um, that you might have noted from the clips. We deal with both um, advertising and we deal with both uh, multimedia and entertainment products, um, which is what we've become uh, uh, most well known for, is our television products, through our TV programs um, that we've created. Um, the focus is on uh, um, media for positive social impact, which is the difference with other media and advertising agencies that we have in the country. So that being the case, I guess I'll talk more about the media and entertainment side of things, because in terms of our industry, we are kind of like different, but encompassing a lot of stuff that I was thinking to myself about how I got into this 
business, and I thought that would be the best way to describe the industry. I look at my life and the timeline of, of, of how I've grown in this industry with certain things that have happened. I remember many years ago, that should have been way back in 1994, when my brother, my brother, we become, our family, first of all, we are like 11 of us. So within the family, there's already a lot of diversity, but it seems like most of us are inclined towards media and entertainment. As far as I knew, mean, there's nothing going on. And through that void, and through that gap, it uh, kind of pushed some of us to say, look, if this does not exist for us, then we have to create it for ourselves. Um, during that same sort of period, 1995, my sister started youth media and started the publication for young people that previously didn't exist. There was, I think at that time, only three newsprint publications for the post Times and the Daily, and none of them were really talking to us, the youth. So we really had nothing going on for us except for the videotapes that people would take with music videos and shows from abroad and send back here. And that was, you know, that was basically what we were exposed to. But there was nothing that spoke to us from us. And, uh, you know, for some of us, it's always been a passion. I, I don't know if I'd say it was a calling, but I know as far back as I can remember, I've always wanted to, to, to be in media and entertainment. I think it was the, the same with my siblings as well. And so it was the issue of how do you create this space for yourself? Because at the time, the industry, due to many factors, social, economic as well, we're coming from a social state, and uh, there wasn't that much the competition out there to spur the advertising industry to grow. But it did grow eventually and over time. And as it grew, the other industries around it grew. Uh, the advertising industries came up, uh, many more advertising companies came up to play. And people started producing local adverts, local, which were there before anyway, and local programming. The music industry saw a rebirth, and there was like a whole shift. Because this was, must have been around 1997, 1998, we started seeing a lot of things uh, coming out from families themselves. Um, and since then, it's just basically been, been growing. It's been steadily growing. There have been challenges, of course, they still are. And I, I, I suspect that there will be challenges for time to come that we will have to address. The solution is in such things. Um, the industry at the moment, uh, how I could describe it, is a lot of, um, I'll talk from the human resource aspect. From the human resource aspect, and this is for media and entertainment, there are very few formally trained people when it comes to television, film, audio, and that's all aspects, and these aspects are very wide. When it comes to media and entertainment, it's a collaborative effort. I don't know if you noticed, in one of the clips on our reel, we show a production meeting where there's like 30 people in there. All those 30 people are all valuable um, contributors to developing the creative process. And this is everybody from the writers, the people who conceptualize the ideas, to the people who make it happen. The, if it's in the case of film, we're talking about the producers and the direct, directors, the actors, the makeup artists, the wardrobe uh, artists, um, the electricians, the accountants, the insurance people, they all fall into, into, into play. And in fact, and this is one of the most complicated uh, things about talking about our industry, is because it encompasses just so many things. You know, um, to produce, in terms of music, for example, it's all, for us in the public, what we will see is the artist. Behind the artist is a producer, is a songwriter, is a sound engineer, is a manager, is an agent, um, is an accountant, a sure, it's all the normal uh, other aspects of business as well are all behind this, this, this person. This is in fact what makes the industry. Previously, as I mentioned, 10 years ago or so when we were making music in our rooms, recording through a headphone onto a tape deck, that was about the summation of it, and we couldn't call it an industry. I think a couple of years ago, I remember hearing on TV 
a debate about whether they could classify arts as an industry in Zambia or if it was just a sector. Um, and because of the fact that an industry needs all this machinery to move, to mobilize and to, be, to make it possible. And I think where we are at the moment is we're definitely getting there. I would like to think that with the products and uh, with what we have out there, that now we can confidently say we have an industry, but it's still growing. Very much at an infant stage, and a lot of stuff that we need to do which will address the challenges and advantages, but the industry is there. Um, with that said, I'd like to talk more about the creative side of things, which is my strength. At Media 365, I serve as the creative director, and it is my job, uh, in collaboration with others, to come up with some of these creative ideas and executions that are tailored to attract people's attention to the issues, to get them talking and to get them acting, to get them to realize that uh, it is ourselves who can make a difference and an impact uh, in society. That's basically what, uh, what my job entails. And it's uh, often very hard, because as Kathy says, you know, we always challenge ourselves to do better. That's one of the ways, as a business, that we can ensure our existence is by staying ahead of the pack and being different, being innovators, as all of you have uh, rightly mentioned. I like to think of creativity in, in three parts. In, in all aspects of creativity, I believe that creativity encompasses skill, craft, and trade. Skill, I believe, is an inherent ability or talent that each one of us has to do a certain thing. Um, and it could be in, in, in different things. When people think about creativity, they tend to think about art. But art is not the only form or expression of creativity. Even in the finance sector, there is a need for creativity. I mean, how else do they steal our money? We don't know. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's all those aspects. So there's the skill, which is the natural, the natural thing that you have. Uh, sorry, the, the, yes, the skill. The craft is what is, is the home skill. Whether it's self-taught, a lot of what we have uh, in terms of human resource in Zambia is self-taught, in terms of the media and entertainment industry at least. It's people who have a passion and are dedicated to teaching themselves how to be the best at what they do. I, the people I work with, some of whom are in this room, um, I, I have worked with from the time when I started working in whatever sector of media it was, and we've grown together, and I've seen how their skill has improved and uh, how their talent has been honed. And it's an essential part of creativity. You cannot stay stagnant. You have to be aware of the trends around you um, and where things are moving and move with the times, but often also be ahead and be an innovator as we all are in this room. Um, finally is the trade, because all too often, especially in the years from my timeline starting from 1994 to now, I've seen a lot of people who have uh, basically given up the dream. Because what it, what it has been, has been, it started with a dream. And it's about holding on to that dream, about being steadfast and, and seeing it happen. But often we meet frustrations and we don't have the resources or the ability to move on. So we do other things that are safe and realize our full potential. So the trade aspect of creativity is very important. You have to know how to sell yourself, how to get work, and how to survive and thrive using your your creativity. Um, with that said, um, our process, as we highlighted, I think you will hear a little picky, um, in terms of developing our creative, uh, our creative, whatever they may be, the products and services, um, usually starts with um, a process we like to call immersion. And that is understanding the environment in which we are operating or the target audience who we are dealing with. We don't believe in a blanket way of um, targeting or talking to people. You know, we have to understand exactly who this is, um, who this is targeted to and why. 
we have to understand what their emotional, financial, all aspects of their lives. And uh, this is the process that we call immersion. Um, and it involves us, in most cases, actually living in the community in which we work, for example. It may not necessarily mean that we're housed today or anything, but being very um, uh, close to it. Um, I remember there was one malaria project that we had to do uh, in Luangwa, and it was very interesting for us because more normally we operate in the urban areas, and we're uh, used to very high-end multimedia products, TV, radio, online. Now we had to speak to a rural audience in Luangwa, of which I had no, none of us had any real, real idea of you know what they were about. So we went there. And we stayed there for some time. And staying there really gave insight into what their issues were and how they thought they could be addressed and how we could innovate to help, ad help address the issues they were going through. The issue at the time was, of course, malaria. They had uh, a big malaria problem there, probably still do. But uh, <laughs> we went there and um, we stayed with the people and became part of the people. Based on what we had uh, observed, and that is the, the beginning of the process. I'd, I'd like to say it's it's a science in that way, in that you know you cannot just it's it's, it's different. For example, from I can if I had the resources, for example, make a movie about whatever passion that I wanted to, but it's not necessarily something that my audience would receive. But I make it anyway because I want to. But in our business, we have to show results. And so that means we have to understand the audience. Um, after the immersion process, we go into the ideation process. And the ideation process is what I want to say, okay, this is what Daliso thinks, this is what Ethel thinks. Now how do we combine all of this into uh, something that they will actually watch, they will actually pay attention to, and they will actually act on? Um, and so we sit down usually in a series of brainstorm meetings. If we're lucky, we can get it right in one brainstorm, but usually it takes a, a, a number of different processes itself, uh, brainstorming amongst each other, consulting other people. Um, as I said, all these things are very collaborative efforts. Whatever you see is not the product of one particular person, it's a product of a team of people. Um, and that's where the ideation process comes in. After ideation, now we actually do the development. The development stage, be it for TV, radio, online, or print, involves, well, that's really the, the hard grunt work, the long hours spent on set, the long hours in the studio, um, the long hours in front of your computer, writing, um, whatever it may be. You guys, I'm sure, are all familiar with that process. And after development, we put the product out, and the most, one of the most important parts, the all important parts, is the feedback and the evaluation. Did it work? Did people receive it um, the way it was intended to? And um, that is basically the Media 365 blueprint for creativity. Um, with that said, I'd like to show case. I think it's that time. Yes, a few highlights of a few products that we have worked on. All of these products that you're going to see are clips from TV programs that we produced from 2009. Um, I think that starts with Club Whiskey Business and goes into 2010 to uh, my country and finally Love Games. These are some of my personal favorite moments that I would like to discuss in terms of challenges and growth uh, after the things. You want to take a second wife, my sister Shane? I'm a pen, I'm a... I am not mad. Perhaps you yourself are mad. You are drunk. <laughs> now you notice my drinking. Listen, my sister Shane. You can keep that mistress of yours. But please, now, Papa, don't embarrass me and the children by marrying her. I am going to marry her, with or without your support. And if you have a problem with that, then I want a divorce. I've given you 27 years of my life in which I've been a faithful wife. She is the mother of my son, my only son. 
I want to raise my son. What son? What son are you talking about? Tawufiala iwe. Ni wachivola. What son are you talking about? You are drunk. Eh, ni nkolwa. But I sure know that Tawufiala iwe panta tasheni te ove. So you believed me when I told you that my uterus had an infection and I couldn't bear children? Well, I lied. You snake. So I dare you, boss. I dare you to prove that that little bastard you want to divorce me for is yours. To show you. You. What happened? How could you just leave her at the altar like that? I told you. I told you I couldn't, I couldn't do this. But nobody would listen to me. Oh, Charlie, don't say that. You know that this can't work. Me and you, it's not possible. We can never be together. Charlie. So what next? I don't know. Maybe we can run away together. You know, and nobody would ever know. Charlie, you're a special guy. And I know that one day you're gonna end up with some lucky girl. But that girl isn't me. This is not meant to be. You have to understand. You! I should have guessed. Carol, this is not what it looks like. This is not what you think. Please, you need to calm down. And to think that I trusted you, Tashani! Don't blame this on Tash. So it's now Tash. What else is she to you? I've been stupid. All alone, I've watched you two become friends. Thinking it was all because of me. No. This was because of me. Okay? It had nothing to do with you. I never meant for this to happen. I should have told you a long time ago. All right? How I was feeling. I never let it get this far. I just, I just got so confused. Confused? You talk about being confused. Do you know what you've done to me for the rest of my life? I will be looked at as the, the, the girl who couldn't keep my husband. I would be looked at as the woman who was left at the altar. As the girl who lost her husband to her cousin. I know this sounds horrible right now, but I never meant to hurt you. And I did this for the both of us. <laughs> Neither of us would have ended up happy with a marriage filled with lies and mistrust. <laughs> I'm fine, don't touch me. I'll be fine.